Hey, brother! Then last week, you and I got to visit New York City, and whilst there, we were able to catch The Lion King on Broadway. Because Hamilton is sold out until January. And it was just awesome, and one of the things that really stood out to me was how certain scenes get extended from what you see in the movie. Perhaps the most notable of which is when Mufasa gets to sing an entire song about all the kings in the sky looking down upon Simba and him. Which got me thinking, who is... Simba's grandfather. microphone is visible. The identity of Simba's grandfather basically makes no difference to the plot at all. Or does it? But Mufasa does reference him and even tells us where to look to find him. The stars. Which got me thinking. Are there any constellations that have to do with lions? And while I'm not sure about all of the great kings of the past, there is at least one that I'm sure, even if you're not familiar with constellations, that at least one twelfth of you are familiar with. Leo, one of the zodiac signs. The Leo constellation is visible in the Northern Hemisphere from March through May and can be found easily by following the pointer stars from the Big Dipper. And it is apparently distinct because it is one of the few constellations that looks like its namesake of a lion, which makes me wonder, what did those people think a lion looks like? But back to the Lion King. While it's great that there actually is a lion in the stars, it doesn't really help us identify who Simba's grandfather might be unless Leo represents a specific lion. And here's where things get fun, because not only does Leo represent a specific lion, but said lion actually appears in another Disney movie that actually involves hanging stars in the sky. But I will get to that movie in a second. First, let's talk about this lion. Leo is meant to represent the Nemean lion, an enormous mythical lion with claws sharper than swords that can pierce any armor, and an impenetrable golden fur that makes it impervious to attack. Predictably, the lion lived in Nemea and was famous for kidnapping women, which would then lure out warriors from neighboring towns to come try and rescue the damsel in distress. The would-be heroes would then enter the lion's cave and see what appeared to be an injured woman, but when they got closer, the woman, who was actually the lion, would transform back into the lion and then kill the hero, who of course couldn't injure the lion because of his impervious golden fur. Which honestly seems like a lot of trouble to go through if you ask me when you already can't can't be hurt, but hey, what do I know about being a mythical lion? Personally, I think I would make a great lion. I mean, just look at my hair, it already looks like Pride Rock. The lion was eventually defeated though by, wait for it, Hercules. The lion was actually the first of his 12 trials. Turns out the lion was actually killing all those heroes to give their bones to Hades. You know, pretty standard stuff. And although the Disney version isn't super accurate to Greek mythology, we do get to see the Nemean lion in Disney's Hercules, right? here. Ah, it just all fits so perfectly. Think about it, we have lions in the Lion King looking to the stars for past kings. The only lion constellation we know of in the stars is Leo. Leo is based on the Nemean lion who we see in Hercules and on top of that, in Hercules, we literally see Zeus hanging stars in the sky. And if that's not enough to convince you that these two movies are connected, take a closer look at the lion skin Hercules is wearing while he poses for a painting. Mm-hmm. Pretty much a dead ringer for Scar. Well, I guess we know where he got his looks from. Okay, but so then if you're following along and doing the math, does that mean Hercules killed Simba's grandfather? Yes, or maybe, at the very least one of his ancestors. The main issue is that Mufasa tells Simba that his father told him about the kings being in the stars. But if it was his father who was in the stars, then how could he have known before he was dead? Unless, of course, he appeared in the stars after he was dead to Mufasa to give him this information, which I know sounds ridiculous, but it is exactly what Mufasa does for Simba in The Lion King, so. The other issue is that Mufasa makes it sound like his father was a great ruler and that he is following in his footsteps, so you wouldn't really expect that his father was working for Hades. But as we know from Meg, Hades can be pretty manipulative, so 
possibly he's working for him against his will. And even if it's not against his will, you have to remember that this lion also gave birth to Scar, so maybe he wasn't actually all that great, and Mufasa is just the kind of guy who respects his elders no matter what. But just look at this lion. I mean, he has the size and strength of Mufasa, but the color scheme of Scar. I mean, he's exactly what you'd expect the father of these two to look like. I even think it would make sense for their father to be a mythical lion, as it would explain where the monarchy derives its power from, other than, you know, just being at the top of the food chain. Similar to other monarchies, though, it would literally be from God, or God's in this case. You can even make the dates work out if you want. I mean, sure, there are no humans in The Lion King, but obviously in Hercules, it is the early days of the humans anyway, so you could easily argue that they just haven't populated the area of Africa that we see in The Lion King. So yeah, I think it's very possible that this is Simba's grandfather, or at the very least, one of his ancestors. Because Mufasa does make reference to the fact that there are many kings watching over them, which would just have to mean that this wasn't the first king, but that's still okay. But then my question for you and everyone else is, what do you think? Is this Simba's grandfather, or at the very least, one of his ancestors? Let me know in the towel section down below. These socks are amazing! Guys, thanks for watching. As always, please leave a like on this video if you haven't already, and subscribe so you don't miss any future Disney theories from us. If you'd like to hear me explain Simba's magic roar from the end of the video, you can check out this video right here. Or if you want to see why Nala should be a Disney princess, I recommend you check out this video right here. But Ben, that's everything I've got for you today, man. I will see you in another life, brother.